But first, should life behind bars mean life? The debate's been reignited again after the sentencing in a few high-profile cases is being reviewed to figure out if they were too excessive. The cases include that of former Met policeman Wayne Cousins. He was handed a whole life order back in September for the abduction, rape and murder of Sarah Everard. He got a whole life order for that. So, do, so too did the killers of six-year-old Arthur Labino Hughes, his mum and her boyfriend. So, should life mean life, Jane? Uh, yes, I think so, because I think when people hear life sentence, that's what we think it means. Um, but now we've gone into this sphere of whole life sentence, meaning that when they get a life sentence, that could then mean that a judge can set a minimum term, so they could be out in 12 years. I have no issue with sort of different tiers of sentencing, depending on the severity of the crime, but... I think maybe we should just make life mean life and then do other sentences where you say, well, maybe 20 years, but you can come out in 12 for good right. behaviour, whatever. I think the whole system needs um, kind of a bit more clarification, if you like. But, in, in the wording, yeah. Yeah, but what, what's going on at the minute, and, of course, I'm suspecting it's going to be being paid for by the taxpayer, all these very highly paid barristers arguing this out in the Court of Appeal... Um, so, Wayne Cousins was unusual. There's 64 whole life terms at the moment in this country. It's usually, they say, because of a political, religi religious or ideological murder. So, for example, um, the man who killed uh, Lee Rigby. Michael Achebelagia, yeah. Yeah. Um, or uh, the, the man who killed Joe Cox. Yeah. Um, but... Or, or a serial killer. And, of course, Wayne Cousins killed Sarah Everard. But the reason that the judge is saying that he gave a whole life sentence was, A, that he was a, a serving police officer and used his warrant card as <clears throat> a complete breach of tr trust, but also that in court... I don't know if any of you read the victim uh, impact statements by Sarah Everard's parents were astonishingly powerful. And her father said to Wayne Cousins, please look at me, mm, because wow. Wayne Cousins would only do this. And the judge said, well, you haven't shown any remorse, and that was part of his decision. Now, Wayne Cousins' barrister is now arguing he only looked down because he felt ashamed and he's got terrible remorse. Oh, well, that's... that's so, this, a so, so, so this is... But this is what's being argued, but it, it just, to me, shows that the system just needs to be clearer. Yeah. What, I mean, what do you think of, of life meaning life? Well, it all depends on the crime, really. And I think, like, serial killers, obviously, people that... Especially, um, what's his name? Wayne, Wayne, Cousins. Wayne Cousins. Wayne Cousins. Well, him. he's not... He killed... No, I know, but he still was in a position of trust. And mm -hmm. so she trusted Very him when so. she met him and he abused that trust, didn't he? I mean, it was terrible what he did to her. And also, the children, the people, the people that kill children, I think if they're given life, they should serve life mm. because they've taken a life away and so their life should be ruined now because they've ruined the life of all the families of all those people that they've killed. But then that... what about all the families of other people whose children or families have been murdered who, whose the murderers are only serving the 12 years for? Does this mean that everyone's going to start trying to readdress the length of time that their murderer for the victim that in their family is going through? So I feel like it, it should be dealt with on a case-by-case -case level. It has to be looked at in, because mm. you don't know what state of mind, what the motives are, that you can't blanket them all under one general law clause, can you? Because there's just so many anomalies. And now, I mean, how, when was the last time we addressed the... the the legal wording, because society's moved on, technology's moved on, the ways people can kill people have just progressed, so... Well, I think that's why they... Cos it used to be in the gift of the, the Home Secretary, the whole life thing, but I think that's why they now put it in the gift of judges, because, of course, they're the ones sitting there yeah. looking at this detail. Um, that, that, that's more understandable, I'd say that's more rational. But then, it, but then it's open to, to legal challenges. Of course. I mean, so. I think with this entire story... And the thing that the, the section of society that are all that, that are locked up in jails, and I think a lot of the focus perhaps should be on, is especially the the younger demographic. We've got a lot of young kids who are jailed for things that perhaps they shouldn't be jailed for. The reoffending rates are high because they don't necessarily have the psychological and emotional support they need when they're inside and when they come out. We have the third highest jail population in Europe, and the suicide rates are twice that of the average rate within Europe. There is something within our system that, that, that isn't working, and I think it's everybody else. I mean, yes, we can, we can talk about whole-life sentences and all of that stuff, 
But again, we are forgetting those kids who, who you know, who have been jailed on for, for, for things essentially... Who are not that... a danger to society. Yeah. Yes, and if you've got money, mm. you know, money talks. And I think if you if you are able to afford the best barristers in the country, um, then you are more likely to not go in jail. A lot of these kids come from, from, from households who just simply can't yeah. afford that. You know, we've got family members who've been jailed for things. Actually, if they'd been given emotional support and, and a better education, they have been a very different And then once you come out, situation. you've got the blight of having been in prison, so then people you won't can't employ get jobs, no. you, yeah. can't, you feel like, you know, and, and when you're looking at those suicide rates, there's a, there is a link there, and I think that they, once again, are a, a, a population and, um, that, that, that continuously is ignored, and we uh, just can't. Yeah, a lot, of the, a lot of the smaller crimes should be, I, I think, they should be made to work. Do community and, service. Yeah, and really work. To, I mean, Boris Becker, a case in point, he is not a, a danger to society, but he has done something really wrong. He should be working. He needs to work. Mm, he needs yeah, to go yeah. and use mm. his skills. And whether he likes it or not, that is his punishment. Yeah. Serving time has to mean serving time. You have to. You can't just cut fast track or, or sit there and do yeah. nothing. You have to serve sometimes. Yeah.